What I love about this 911 GT3 RS is that it's unlike any other GT3 RS I've shot so far. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, my name's Tanner Seymour. For those of you new to the channel, welcome. First of all, <laughs> I'm a professional automotive photographer and videographer, but by day I'm a creative director uh, full-time. And so usually on the weekends is when I get to sneak these things in. And uh, I'm usually on a plane uh, Saturday morning or Friday night and uh, back on a plane Sunday night. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty pretty interesting, uh, I would say, lifestyle. But yeah, I shoot a lot of cars. And today's car is very special. It's actually from a buddy of mine here local uh, named Tommy, and he's got quite a collection of Porsche cars that I've shot, but finally get to shoot the GT3 RS, his, his prized possession, I would say. And uh, there's a couple of reasons that. It's not like any other GT3 RS. It's really customized in a beautiful way um, that doesn't intrude on the car itself. So you purists might be happy with this, but uh, anything done to this car can be bolted off. It's just bolt on and, and off. And uh, I think he said in 15 minutes flat, he can take it from where it is customized to stock. So um, he has done quite a bit to the car though, having said that, and uh, it, it's you know primarily cosmetics, but uh, I do love and appreciate the look of this car. Hey, real quick though, before we get to the story, go ahead and leave a like down below and uh, comment if you have a car, if you wanna shoot, hey, um, let's book my weekends out. I'm absolutely down to fly out, shoot your car, tell your story. Uh, go ahead and uh, message me on Instagram, Tanner B. Seymour, or uh, comment below and we'll strike up a conversation. So anyway, without further ado, guys, let's take it away to Tommy. So when I first started out looking for an RS, it was something that I'd always wanted. In fact, I always wanted a GT3. That was one of my dream cars. And for myself, I'd always look around and I, I had a car, a Carrera 4S, and I thought, is it really worth double or triple the price of my current car? And the answer was always, it's probably not worth it, but I should probably do it because of the way they sound. And so I was looking around and in particular, I was looking for an RS if I could find one. Uh, I was looking at the time of COVID and the pricing was crazy high. At the time, I really wanted to find a lava car uh, because I just think that the lava orange is, is such an amazing color on the GT3 RS. And I was looking around, but there really wasn't anything in the market locally that was close to what I wanted. So. For example, in Salt Lake City, there was a lava orange uh, and they didn't have any air conditioning. It was an AC delete unit, which is normal because you want to make these cars as light as possible and Porsche builds them without a radio and without an air conditioner. Uh, and I, I just, I wasn't going to go for that because it still gets 100 degrees here. So I looked around and when I saw this car in Sacramento, it was a high-end dealer. Uh, he had taken and put a lot of money into the car. So brand new tires, uh, brand new paint protection film, had replaced all of the front spoiler fairings and everything around the, the side of it. Um, had just done a lot of nice work. It was as clean as I could find uh, as far as cars go. Uh, and then I also noticed one thing that was unique about this car. Whoever optioned it from the factory went with deviated stitching. So they went with the lava orange stitching, the lava orange seat belts, and then also the steering wheel marker. And so for me, that, that felt right because I had a, a canvas that was white. I knew I could do a lot with it. Uh, and so I selected this car and in my head, I started to envision what this would eventually look like to make it my RS. Uh, and so it was on, I decided to purchase this vehicle and I jumped a quick flight all the way out to Sacramento and I told them, hey, I'm gonna drive this thing home. So when I got to the dealership, I'll never forget this thing pulled out. It was absolutely pristine. Again, brand new ceramic coating on it, paint protection. It shined like you couldn't believe. I was giddy, I get in the car, I sit down, and this is, mind you, my first time driving this car on a road. So I had driven a GT3 RS on the track a couple years before, and that's what really, really got me interested in having this car. Me and my son for his 18th birthday, we took these cars around the track, we had such a great time. And so I was sold, I had to have a GT3 RS, and it took me a couple years to find this car. So here I am, I get in, I sit down, and I put it into drive, and if you're familiar with it, you have sport mode and non-sport mode, so I had non-sport mode on, and I started driving around. And this thing, what I love about the 991.1, and I've grown to really appreciate it, 
is they are super raw. So it has a race car transmission and a race car motor. And if you're not familiar with it, it sounds awful. When you put it into gear, it's clunking around almost like a cement mixer in the back seat. It just sounds awful. And that sound, I literally thought, I've got a lemon. <laughs> Here I've flown out to Sacramento and I bought this car and it's broken. Uh, and I even went back to the guy and said, hey, what's going on here? And he said, no, no, that's, that's how they're supposed to be. And I actually had to pull my phone out, do a quick search and validate that yes, RSs sound awful <laughs> when they're not happy. And he said, just put it in a sport mode, get it above 4,000 RPMs and tell me what you think then. And uh, needless to say, I was sold. So I jumped in that car and my plan was, I'm gonna drive this all the way back home to Utah. So uh, I wanted to stop along the way. I had a hotel, it was gonna be in Reno. Uh, I got there about 6 p.m. and I thought I could make it to Reno, pick up the car, eat food and get there before midnight. So there I was, I jumped in the car, hopped in, I was fighting daylight. I knew that, that we were gonna get up above Tahoe. I was worried about hitting deer and whatnot. I, I was flying up and around that uh, beautiful pass and I got into Reno a little bit early. And so my plan was, hey, I'm gonna go to sleep about 11.30. I'll wake up at six in the morning and I'll start my drive to Utah. I was so excited because uh, for the first time in my life, I had my dream car and I couldn't even sleep. So there I was laying in the hotel room in Reno, a crappy hotel room, three in the morning. And I woke up and I thought, I've got a GT3 RS out there. What am I doing sitting here in a hotel room? So I hopped in the car, hit the road by about 4 a.m. and I was gone. And as I started driving, you could imagine this is on a Thursday. So on a Thursday afternoon between Reno and Wendover, there's not a lot of people on the road. So I decided to open this thing up and there were plenty of really fun moments, some tunnels. If you've been on that road, you know there's some tunnels. There's nothing like the sound of a tunnel in a car like this. Just hammering it through the tunnels, over the roads. And we definitely put this car to the test. Uh, probably exceeded some of the legal limits, but definitely did not exceed the mechanical limits in this car. And I just had an absolute riot, uh, such a fun drive home. Uh, I was giggling most of the time and just couldn't get the smile off my face for weeks. Since having the car, I've been able to have some really amazing moments. Most of those are with my son. Um, I've put my mom in the car, my dad in the car, they're in their 80s, they've had a riot with it. But watching my 20 year old son, we came up actually to this area. We're not allowed to disclose where this is. This is a super secret location. Uh, but we were driving around these roads up here and I figured, hey, at 20 years old, he's been on the track, he could handle this car. So I said, go for it, Let, let's hit it. And my son, when he got on it and he felt the PDK shifting through and just felt the power of this car, uh, he didn't say anything. It was all in his face. I believe everyone has an RS face <laughs> and he made the RS face. And uh, I'll never forget it. I still have it on my phone, just watching his face melt uh, in, into the pleasure of this car. And so that's one of my, my favorite moments so far in, in owning the vehicle. Once I got the vehicle, um, I decided to make it mine because who wants a, just another white RS? So like I mentioned, there's the deviated stitching, the orange pattern. A friend of mine, Gabe, he and I started designing different ideas that we could do, um, you know, a, a golf look because we started with the orange and that's where we were gonna go from. Um, I had for a moment debated, do I wanna wrap the whole car in golf blue? Uh, but I liked the cleanliness of the white. And I also, if you notice the, the patterns there, we designed a custom look. We thought, uh, we took kind of a blend of martini. We looked at how Porsche OEM does things on the side st uh, stripes. So we came up with this custom kit printed it out, put it on the car. And for me, the only thing was missing were colorful wheels. So I'm a huge fan of the new 992 GT3 RS. I would love to own one one day, but if I'm honest, I'm probably on the seven year plan, like most of us. We're gonna have to wait till they hit the market and enough room are there that people will start selling them for a reasonable price. But what I love about the new 992 is most of the buyers you'll see are specking them just like they used to back in the 996, 997 days with colored wheels. And I've loved that idea. And so that's what was spinning in my head. And I saw these amazing Vossen wheels. Uh, a friend of mine had these on his car, another GT3 RS, he had them in white. And he told me he was gonna sell his car. And so I asked him, hey, could I be first on your list if you go to sell those wheels? And lo and behold, he called me, uh, thanks Jeeves. <laughs> and we took these wheels uh, to a, a coating company. We had them sandblasted down and we had them powder coated this amazing bright orange <laughs> to give it the color that I had in my head and, and I couldn't be happier. I think it's just a really fun way. Uh, I think if you have an RS, you've got to be rowdy. Uh, you should be outrageous with how you build it out. And so this has been a lot of the fun for me is customizing this and making it mine. Um, another note is just the inserts. So I found uh, a tartan pattern. It's a Pepita 
uh, called Spirit of Le Mans. So it's also the Gulf colorways uh, and it's a, a typical like Pepita uh, pattern that you'd see inside the stitching. So I've got custom seat inserts that I think really set this car off, make it very unique. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do is, is leave the windows open, let other people take a look at it because uh, for me, like sharing these vehicles, uh, get your idea, make it yours, share it with other people. Not everyone's gonna love it and hey, I'm okay with that because uh, for me, most of this stuff, if I hate it, I can take it back to stock in about 15 minutes. So it's been a lot of fun for me. Um, definitely a dream car. We'll see where we go from here. And so lastly, what makes this car different from anything that I've ever owned? I'm normally an air-cooled guy. Uh, I grew up with posters on my wall, like many of us of my generation did, of like G-bodies, and then eventually I was fascinated by the 964. I've had a couple of those in the past. And then I went back to long hoods, and for a long time, that's all I ever wanted. I've owned several of them. Um, whether it's a long hood, whether it's a G-body, a 964, 993, there's something really special about an air-cooled car particularly the earlier ones because they don't have anything that's computer driven. Uh, you take, for example, a 1970 Targa that I had, that baby was manual transmission, no power steering, no anti-lock brakes. It was just you and that car. Um, and that's a really special feeling. It's a connectedness that you have. What makes this car special? Oh my goodness, it will take even a crappy driver like myself and it can put you into a turn and allow you to own that turn like nothing else because of the technology. Um, it's not quite as refined as, as some of the newer generations. I do love the 991.1 in particular. It's got just enough technology, just enough raw power uh, that you have to fight the car a little bit. And there's definitely a connection with the driver where it doesn't overpower you uh, the way that some of the newer ones might, in my opinion. Uh, but it, it definitely is different, it's unique, and there is nothing like the sound of 9,000 RPMs. That's the one thing I could never get out of an air-cooled car. 65, 7,000 RPMs sounds beautiful with air-cooled. There's a Banshee sound of a 2.7. Uh, this 9,000 RPMs is something you have to experience in order, in order to understand where I'm coming from. So for anyone considering a GT3 RS of any kind, but in particular a car like this, my, my final send-off would be just do it I, you know there's life is short a lot of people they look at a car like this and they think why do you put all the money into the car and then the money into personalizing it and i am very 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 much aware that we don't take any of this stuff with us on the next life which is why we have to enjoy it in this life and so i'm all about you know jumping into a car like this and experience and having so much fun with it while we're here while we're young while we can appreciate it um, you know, I think I would just encourage anyone who's thinking about it, just do it. It's not a bad decision. It's a great one. Hey guys, thanks for watching till the end. If you like this video, like I said before, go ahead and leave a like down below. Let me know some feedback. Uh, let me know things you wanna see in the future episodes, or hey, again, if you have a car that you want filmed, let me know in the comments below, I do read them. I wanna give a quick thank you to the people who make this possible, the sponsors of the channel. Uh, we're gonna start out with my favorite one, PMB Performance. Thank you guys. PMB Performance is a wonderful shop where you can restore your car. Uh, they primarily work with European and specifically Porsches. They've got a ton of just labors of love out there already and uh, they were actually featured on Jay Leno as well. Uh, they're local here to Utah so all you Utah peeps, big shout out. Uh, go give PMB Performance some love. They're linked down below. You can find their site. Uh, and then another one, Pelican Parts. Pelican Parts keeps me on the road, guys. They're helping me out. Uh, they just helped out with an alternator on my 911 project, my wide body Safari 911. So big shout out to you, Pelican Parts. Guys, you know I love you. And for wheels, when you guys like to take your street cars off-road, Braid Wheels is perfect. Um, I would say Braid Wheels is an awesome, awesome wheel manufacturer. The fact that I get to work with them is, is a, like beyond me. It's a blessing. Uh, so they're helping me out with the wheels on the Safari and uh, I just got to give them a shout out. I love them so much. Um, I, I specifically sought out to, to work with them and uh, lucky enough to, to be partners with Braid Wheels. So big shout out to you guys, Braid. 
you know I love you. I can't wait for the wheels to come in and it's gonna look great on the car. So, and I do want to give a quick brief shout out to Rhino Racks. Uh, guys, we're, we're, we're kind of in a testing phase. We've received some parts and stuff we're trying to make work because we're in an experimental pioneer stage where we're doing things nobody's ever done to a 911 before, a, a G-Body 911 before. So uh, we're, we're kind of, there's a lot of testing and, and stuff that goes into this. Rhino Racks is helping us out with that. So I cannot leave you guys without shouting them out. And uh, I really do appreciate the support and the care they put into the build just as much as I have. And hopefully we'll be able to show you guys what we've been working on and hopefully it works out. So anyway guys, that being said, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next episode.